Hey guys, I am the 50s kid and behind me is an E46 BMW and this video is going to be about the dreaded P0171 and 174 codes. These are the System 2 Lean, Bank 1 and 2 respectively. Now, what this actually means is that your oxygen sensors are detecting too much oxygen in the exhaust, which means that the engine is running lean. Um, that there's too much oxygen going to the engine and not enough fuel for it to be burning that, that, uh, that oxygen up completely and most efficiently. Now, either your oxygen sensors have gone bad or your engine actually is running lean. Most vehicles only have one catalytic converter and they have two oxygen sensors, one before the catalytic converter and one after it. And they work together in order to tell the engine if the catalytic converter is actually working. They also help the engine figure out if it's running lean, if it's running rich, and so on. But our cars actually have two catalytic converters. That's where the bank one and bank two come in. Bank one is cylinders one through three, bank two is four through six. So because they have two catalytic converters, that means they have four oxygen sensors. So if you have codes 171 and 174, it's pretty unlikely that your, that, that, that your oxygen sensors are bad because why would two go bad at exactly the same time? It, it's statistically unlikely. If you are getting both of these codes at the same time, I tend to think that your oxygen sensors are working and, in, and, and I'm going to believe them and I'm going to think that, okay, your engine is running lean. So let's talk about that. Why would your engine actually be running lean? The most common cause, the number one cause that your engine is going to be running lean is, is that you have a vacuum leak. So what is a vacuum leak? Well, to understand what it is, you have to understand how a modern fuel injected vehicle works. On a fuel injected vehicle, you have a mass airflow sensor right after the air filter. That sensor's job is to tell the engine how much air is entering it. That way the engine can determine how much fuel it needs to squirt through the fuel injectors in order to burn that volume of air at the, at the most efficient ratio so that it's not lean and it's not rich. If there's air getting in anywhere to the intake after the mass airflow sensor because of, let's say, a whole, you know, there's a tear in the intake boot, there's uh, you know, a, a gasket is leaking somewhere, any, any, any kind of way for air to be getting into the system after the mass airflow sensor, that would be air that's unaccounted for by the mass airflow sensor. That would be more air that's getting sucked into the engine and that will cause the engine to run lean. So what we need to do is we need to look at the intake system on the vehicle and we need to check for leaks in all the various places that air could possibly get in. And I'm gonna show you all of those common places on the E46. This also applies to the E39 because they both have the M54 engine. This also would apply for the M52 engine as well. It's very, very similar. But anyway, let's get started. First of all, remove the air scoop and the air filter box. And through the magic of editing, we have that off. And here's the mass airflow sensor on the M54 engine. If something goes bad with, with your mass airflow sensor, you could try cleaning it. Um, I know that the BM, you, normally on, on cars, you're able to clean a mass airflow sensor. You need to use special cleaner in order to do it. They make it specifically for, specifically for this. It's called mass airflow sensor cleaner. And you would basically just spray that little, the, the little wire in there and do not touch it. Do not ever touch it because you will ruin it that way. Don't get your oil, your, your, the oils from your fingers on it or anything like that. If you have an aftermarket unit, that's probably going to be a, a, the cause of some of your problems. If you go through the rest of this video and you don't find any leaks anywhere, there aren't any rips and tears in your boots and your gaskets are all good and your o-rings are sealed, the mass airflow sensor if it's aftermarket, is almost certainly your culprit. I've seen numerous reports of the aftermarket units uh, being problematic, and somebody's gone and stuck their old one back in, and you know cleaned it up in certain cases, and that's that solved their problems. So beware of aftermarket eBay mass airflow sensors. You want to get your original one made by Siemens. Okay. As I said, I'm showing you the top three most common causes of vacuum leaks. Now, in order to do this, um, you're going to need to remove various parts. I have another video on um, E46 common repair steps. I will link to that video right here. Go ahead and review that video first because 
I'm not going to remove these things live in this video. I'm just going to remove them and cut between that just so we can get through this all faster. But one thing you need to do is remove the microfilter housing and the microfilter. And we need to remove the heat shield back here in order to get access to everything down in here and inspect it. Voila, those things are removed. Remove your upper intake boot and inspect it for cracks. Look in all the crevices here, okay? Look for cracks everywhere. Pull it apart like this. This is just some of the silicone spray that I use to uh, get this, get that elbow out of here. And also take a look at that elbow. Take a look at the vacuum hoses along the elbow. This vacuum hose down here. You might have an elbow that only has one hose connected to it. So um, whatever configuration you have, take a look at your, your vacuum hoses. If they're cracked, if they're brittle, if they're not all squishy like this and brand new, then replace them. So most common cause, number one, would be a, the disavalve O-ring, as you see right here. This is a rebuilt unit. You can see that this is a normal looking rounded O-ring. If your unit has not been rebuilt and you have an M54 engine, you're gonna have sort of a square looking O-ring that's molded into this channel. And by now it's probably um, worn away and it could be letting air in to the intake manifold through right here. And if that is the case, you're gonna need to dig it out with uh, basically with like a really flat screwdriver and uh, get yourself a new o-ring you can find them on ebay make sure you get the right o-ring for your DISA unit use realoem.com to find uh, your exact DISA unit part number actually your part number should be here so one of these two i think it's actually this one down here so you can look for uh, that part number and you can see the application and then you'll see you'll find your car and you'll find your o-ring all right now we're getting into the meat and potatoes here this right here is common cause number two. This little elbow right in here usually cracks and fails. This is the takeoff that goes to the idler control valve. So it by that's air that, ba that bypasses the throttle plate, which is down in here. So you need to remove the lower intake boot here and check it, bend it back and check and see, make sure there are no cracks or anything in it to make sure it's all good. So check it out. In the process of inspecting that lower boot when I was getting it off, pulling it back and inspecting there, I cracked it. Which shows you how old it is and shows you how, um, what the potential is for this thing to crack and that's basically how it will fail. So I'm actually not upset that I did this because I knew it was old and I knew it was going to happen one of these days. So one of the things I've just been meaning to replace and was waiting until the time was right. I've removed the nut on the oil dipstick tube here, and I've removed the fasteners on the uh, electronics box here. And I will disconnect it from the idle air control valve, just so I can kind of pull it back a little. I also need to disconnect it from the, from the EVAP control solenoid. I'm pulling it back just so you guys can get a better view of this tube down in here. This one, this one right here. This is the one that you need to check. Run your finger up along it and feel where it connects to the oil separator. It usually breaks right at that connection to the oil separator. So here we go, here's a little handheld shot. We're gonna move in down below here, okay. Down here, that's the oil separator right there. This little, uh, this, big, this big round thing here. Big round thing here is the oil separator. That's the hole, that's the return hose that goes down to the oil dipstick tube. And it cracks right there, right, right where my finger is pointing. So if yours is cracked and all covered with oil, that's, a, that's gonna be a major vacuum leak and your, your car is gonna idle really roughly when you, um, when you turn it on and it won't go away till your engine warms up. And by the way, you didn't need to do what I did here. You didn't need to remove this stuff and, and all of this just to check it. If you jacked your vehicle up, you can see that from underneath, from underneath here. So I'll throw a picture up on the screen right now what that looks like, what mine looked like when I first found it to be broken. And that's what it looks like. And if that's broken, I've got a video on how to replace your CCV system, which I will link to right here. And that would be common cause number three. These are the three most common causes for having a vacuum leak on this engine. 
So that tube that runs down from the oil separator and, uh, and runs down here, it, go, it actually connects to the, the dipstick tube right at the bottom there. And the dipstick tube is plugged into the oil pan and there's an O-ring right in that opening, right around the, the dipstick tube so that it seals properly. If, if that O-ring has come unseated or if it's deteriorated or anything like that, basically air is going to get in through there and then it's going to get sucked back up through the return line because that return line is connected to the the oil separator which is connected to the intake manifold so again you have to follow things through you have to realize you know everything that spreads out from the intake manifold you got to follow it back to the source and 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 make sure that uh, there are no leaks anywhere so anyway that's that's one thing to check all you got to do is remove the the fastener from right here and then you can just pull the oil dipstick tube out and check the o-ring and uh, make sure that it's seated properly. So some other uh, some other minor causes for vacuum leaks around the intake manifold would be there are two uh, vacuum hoses coming off of the back of it right here. Here's one and there's another beneath it. This one goes down to uh, the vacuum canister and the other one runs up along here and comes over to the secondary um, air, air pump valve. And if those are cracked, then you're going to have vacuum leaks. So you'll want to check those. I actually cover those in detail in the CCV uh, slash intake manifold removal and change video. So check that video out for complete details on those. So that kind of, that, that pretty much covers it for this side of the engine. You want to look at this vacuum hose too that runs to the brake booster. Um, make sure that this is intact and not cracked anywhere and it's not, uh, it's not messed up. Now it's not just that oil return line that you need to look at with the CCV system. You also need to look at the other three hoses in the system. There's this one that runs across the top of the intake manifold. There's this one here, which kind of snakes down through and connects to the oil separator. And there's this one, which actually connects the valve cover to the oil separator. And you need to look at all these hoses and make sure that they're not cracked, make sure they're in good condition. Again, refer to my CCV video to, uh, to, to get the full details on that. But this kind of brings me to the valve cover gasket. This is one area where I think people just kind of, they, they, don't, they don't really think about this when it comes to vacuum leaks, but this gasket around the valve cover actually gets very brittle over time and hard and it cracks. That's actually gonna cause a vacuum leak because think about it. If air is getting in to the, va to the valve cover, look what, it's, look what the valve cover is connected to. The valve cover is connected through this hose to the oil separator, which is connected through these hoses to the intake manifold. So that means it's drawing vacuum. That means if air is getting in here, it's gonna travel through here, gonna travel into the intake manifold, not accounted for by the MAF sensor. So if your valve cover gasket is leaking, that will cause a vacuum leak. Also, don't forget to look at this vacuum line down here. Um, basically, if, you, if you've never looked at this vacuum line and, and you picked it up like I just did, it's probably gonna crack right in half. So take a look at it, be prepared to replace it, get some uh, 1 8 inch vacuum line from your local auto parts store. So those are the most common causes of vacuum leaks on the E46 BMW with an M54 or an M52 engine. Now I'm not saying this is everything that could, could, um, could possibly be causing it, but these are like the most likely things. Like 95% of the cases out there should be covered by what I've, what I've done in this video. Um, if you do all of the repairs and you still have a vacuum leak, I, I, I probably won't be able to help you because I'm not there. I'm not looking at your engine. I'm not, you know, I can't see what's going on. So it's really hard to, you know, diagnose things over the internet. The reason, the, 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 the biggest thing that I've been trying to get across in this video is, is for you to understand how the engine works, why a vacuum leak is being caused, the, the fact that it is more air that is getting sucked into the engine somehow. So if you keep that major thought in mind, that concept in your head, and you work through the steps of diagnosing your problem, you will eventually find it. One other thing I do want to mention too is that also to check for exhaust leaks at the exhaust manifold where it where it contacts the uh, the engine block where it's where it's bolted up to the engine block because again that's before the oxygen sensors. So if there's an exhaust leak right there, you're going to have all of the exhaust rushing through past that opening and air moving fast past a small opening is going to create a vacuum at that small opening. It's going to draw 
air in. So that's going to be drawing in more oxygen and then it's going to hit the oxygen sensor and the oxygen sensor is going to detect too much oxygen. So that's another kind of uh, um, very, very minor possibility, but it's just something else that occurred to me. So again, you have to look for, for things everywhere and uh, hopefully your problem is one of these most common things and hopefully uh, you will be able to fix it. And I wish you good luck and uh, thanks for watching.